All materials used in building a church does not come from the same source. Therefore, all the wood used in constructing a temple does not also come from the same tree. A church is the only place where trespasses will be forgiven. A church is the only place where trespasses and trespassers will be forgiven. So all the sins must be forgiven in the church and those sinners must be forgiven. Therefore, make sure that you forgive anyone who has hurt you or disappointed you. A church is a hospital for sinners, not a clubhouse for saints. <laughs> A church is a hospital for sinners, not a clubhouse for the saints. Therefore, our topic this morning is how to edify one another, how to build up one another. How can we edify one another? How can we build up one another? Can we build up one another through gossip? No. Can we build up one another through long papaya faces? No. Can we build up one another by gossiping? No. Can we build up one another by anger? No. Can we build up one another by fault-finding attitude? No. Can we build up one another by rumors of false accusation? No. All these things will destroy the body. These are the elements which Satan throw into the body of Christ to dislodge the body of Christ, to dislocate it, and to cause confusion. Any word that do not minister grace to you is not of God. Anything that makes you to become hyped up in the flesh is not of God. Do not lay your hand upon innocent souls because the Lord will not allow you to go free. Therefore, how can we build up one another? We can build up one another by following the examples of Jesus Christ. Many things Jesus taught us in the Bible. When Peter the Apostle was writing, he said, follow the footprint of Jesus which he had led before us what are the examples of Jesus Christ he forgave the sinners a woman who was caught in adultery was forgiven by Jesus he was caught red handed yet she was caught red handed yet Jesus forgave how much more we need to do the same while on the cross of Calvary, the Bible declared in the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 34. While they were nailing him, he prayed a prayer. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. These are examples that we need to follow. These are the examples that we need to follow. Now, as we go through the scriptures, we are going to pick them up one by one. And also, not only that, we are going to look how to stay true in life affairs. How can you stay true without being polluted? So let's go to how to edify one another. First, we can edify one another by washing the feet of others. John chapter 13, verse 15 through 16. You call me teacher and Lord, and yes... You say, well, for I, so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Look at that. Washing one another's feet in love. Washing one another's feet in respect. Washing one another's feet in honor. Washing one another's feet with courage. Washing one another's feet. J 
Jesus said, I've given you example. You call me Lord, you call me teacher. So I am. But you see the example I've given to you, follow the same. But are we following the same? Instead of washing people's feet, we try to use nail to kill them. Washing one another's feet. Encouraging one another. Strengthening one another. Washing away the field that we may find at the feet of somebody. Being instrument that God uses to save souls. To save people who want to backslide. To save those who want to back off from God. That's what we're supposed to be. Not encouraging them. Neither following them. Second. By being kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Romans chapter 12 verse 10. Being kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Look at the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 10. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another. Being affectionate to one another, kindly love, with kindly love, brotherly love, honoring one another. How can you show that you really, you really care for somebody? Will you pay the price? Praying for people's businesses, praying for families without even them knowing it. Kneeling before God, that's how you show your love. It's not by just because you give one dollar or two dollars. But by showing that you care behind the veil. That you truly care. Being affectionate to one another. Talk with respect, with honor. Not seeking for notice. Not trying to prove something. But showing that, well, I know Jesus. The author of love. Thirdly. We can identify one another by being of the same mind. Repairing no one evil for evil. Romans chapter 12, verse 16 through 18. The Bible says, Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Let's stop the moment before we continue. You see what it says? Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things. Associate with the humble. Humility is not out, outside inside. It is inside outside. It is the attitude of the heart. That anyone who sees you will know that you are humble. Not because you say it. But because you can really see it. Through the eyes of God. You have the same mind. What kind of mind are we talking? Not mind of boastfulness. Not mind of arrogance. Not mind of I can do it. Not mind I can go. I can say it I like. I can just go and throw my word. Not mind of being a person who do not honor or give honor to whom honor is due. But mind of Christ. Mind of humility. Mind of joy. Mind of peace. Be a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. That's the mind we're talking about. And in verse 17 it says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Repay no man evil for evil. Don't ever try that. It does not matter what people have done against you. Repay no man evil for evil. Always prove to people that you can live in this planet earth above reproach. You can live above sin. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 14. For sin shall have no dominion over you. Not even your anger. What kills a man is nothing but false humility. When they see you, hello, hello. But inside, it's nothing but like a white painted sepulchre. God wants to have a remnant. God wants to change people's life. Don't resist him. Let him change your way. Our ways are not God's ways. 
But I tell you, when you walk in God's way, you have nothing to fear. A man or woman who fears God has nothing else to fear. But a man or woman who doesn't fear God, he has all things to fear. Next, how to edify one another. We can edify one another by not being judgmental. Don't be judgmental. Judgmental attitude is not of God. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block on, or a cause of fall in your brother's way. You see it? Judgmental attitude. Apostle Paul wrote, <clears throat> don't be judgmental. Don't go and do things that will make your brother or your sister to stumble on the way. Because your attitude will determine your altitude. And your attitude can destroy people's life. What you do. I always say it. If I do something wrong, it will not only affect my family. It will affect the whole family of the Lord or the church of God. And it will affect many other Hundreds of thousands or even not millions around the world. Therefore, don't do something wrong. Because what you do will not only affect your family, it will affect many other people. And remember, what you sow, you reap. You might have little children, now you say, I will do it. What you sow, you reap. If it doesn't come now upon you, it will come after to your children. Therefore, be careful. Don't do something that will make somebody to stumble. When Matthew the Apostle was writing in the book of Matthew chapter 7, look at verses 1 and 2. Judge not that you be not judged. For what, with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the message you use, measure you use, it will be measured back to you. That's Bible. That is my joy that God is not a respecter of man. God is not a partial God. If I do evil, God will deal with me. If you do, same goes to you. So it's not like God will say, oh, because it's Daniel, so okay, evil is good. Never. Evil is evil in the eyes of God. Whatever you do, evil is evil. God is not a partial God. That's why the Bible declares in Second Chronicle, chapter 19, verse 7, it says very clearly, God does not take bribe. God does not practice partiality. Therefore, be strong to do the work of God without partiality. Don't be biased against people. Regardless of their race. Be open-minded. Follow the way of the Lord. That's all. Then you can edify one another. Avoid judgmental attitude. It's not of God. It won't lead you anywhere. Avoid it. Next, to build up one another, we must learn to receive one another. Romans chapter 15 verse 7. Receive one another. Regardless of their shortcomings, receive them. But don't be part of their sin. The Bible declared, Jesus loves sinners, but he hates their ways. He hates sin. Don't throw away sinners. Bring them in. Love them, but don't love their ways. Don't love their sin. So when the Bible says receive one another, it doesn't mean that receive people with their sin and be part of their sin. No. Receive them and point them to Christ and say, well, brother, sister, this attitude does not represent the man that is hung on the cross because of this particular sin. Therefore, do it no more. That's what it is. That's what we mean by receiving one another. Next, in order to edify one another, we must admonish, rebuke one another. Romans chapter 15, look at verse 14. The Bible said, Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge able also to admonish one another. We're able to rebuke one another when somebody had done something wrong as a child of God. That person is your brother, it's your sister. Rebuke evil. 
But not insulting them. Don't insult people. Don't go now and insult somebody. And the Lord said, eh, 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 no, please. Stop pointing fingers. There's a way to reach out to people with love and compassion. Even you can reach out to your pastor. Pastor, this is what I had. Is it wrong or not? What happened? You have every right to do that. If the pastor do wrong, he needs to be chided. He needs to be rebuked. But not being far away to throw your mud. Being far away to throw your slings. That is more devastating. That is more killing. Because sudden death comes by sudden blow. That's why we must be matured. If you really are matured in the Lord, you must know how to handle issues. And tell the Lord, how do I go about this? Therefore, rebuke one another. There are many people who does things without knowing even the consequences of what they are doing. They don't even know that what they are doing is wrong. So they need somebody to correct them. To chide them, to rebuke them, to admonish them. Brother, don't do like this. Yes, you might tell me, Pastor, sometimes you tell them they cannot take it. It depends on how you present your issue. Don't go with policeman's idea. The Lord said you cannot do this, cannot do this, cannot. No, no, that's not the way. But go with love. Go with love. Brother, this is not too good. Talk to that person with love. Then if the person doesn't agree, you have done your own job. So we have every right to rebuke. Next. For us to edify one another or build up one another, we must learn to bear one another's burden. In the book of Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, look at verse 2. And three, it says, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the Lord of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Bear one another's burden. That's what the Bible says. And fulfill the Lord of Christ. Sometimes the burden you are bearing might be a burden that needs to be carried on our knees. Now listen carefully. Every call has a burden with it. But all burdens are not a call. You must remember this. Every call of God upon your life carries a burden. But remember, not all burdens are calls from God. You might go out there and see a, a beggar. Or see somebody who's hungry. Just reach out, take some $5, give to eat. That's not your calling. But you felt the burden to reach out to that person. So it doesn't mean that every time, every day, you have to be giving five, five dollars today. No, that's what you are calling. But that is a burden. But every burden carries, every call carries a burden. You have that burden inside of you to do something. So the same thing, beloved brethren, carry one another's burden. For instance, last night, it was about some minutes past 12 midnight. I was in my study. When the Lord put upon me to call somebody. So that way I tell my wife, can you call, get me this person? She said, it's late. I said, call that person. She said, she doesn't have the number. I said, okay, we, have, we are going to get somebody who gets this number now. So that way she remembers somebody. I said, okay, call it. She said, shall I call somebody? I said, no, I don't have a leading. Call the other person. Then she called the person I told her to call, and we got the number. And we call up this family, going through time of difficulties now. And they were shocked. What she asked me was, are you in Singapore? I said, yes. Because she did not express such call at that time. So I took the phone and prayed with his family. You see, that's a burden. You bear one another's burden. It can be any time, it could be any moment that God will tell you, get this person in line, call this person, pray now. Pray. So this is how it goes. And this is how it works. Carry one another's burden. Be a burden bearer for your brethren. Don't be a problem creator. Don't create problem. Be a burden bearer. What you are not sure of, go and ask. It is our arrogance and pride, hidden pride, that make us to say, no, I will, I, I'll give it to them. That's not God. Never. It's not. That's not Christianity. So again, the Bible said in verse 3 of that Galatians 6, if anyone think himself to be something, when you know you are nothing, you deceive yourself. Many times we think that we are something. 
Oh, I know who I am. You are nothing except who you are in Christ. I remember somebody said this to me. Pastor, I want to go and teach that guy a lesson. Pastor, I'm just telling you because I'm just boiling. I'm going to teach him a lesson. I called the brother. Listen, brother. What did you say? He said, Pastor, I'm just telling you. I want to teach that guy a lesson. I told him, brother, listen. You have no lesson to teach that guy except the lesson which Jesus had taught him. And that lesson is lesson of forgiveness. Can I hear amen? That's the only lesson. No lesson again. I, I want to teach a lesson. You have no lesson. This guy, we have already learned lesson. And that lesson is lesson of forgiveness and love. That's all. So not any lesson that is more than love and forgiveness is not lesson. It becomes what? Confrontation. Confrontation. Therefore, don't think you're something where you're nothing. Otherwise, you're deceiving yourself. Next. To encourage one another, we must comfort and edify one another. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Comfort and edify. Let your word minister grace to the hear, edify, build them up. Let your word edify them, build them up. You don't come to church to receive motivational teaching. You come here to receive word that will keep you burning and flaming for God. So that you can look at your life and say, hey, I miss God within the week. I miss God on social date. The word from the pulpit has made it clear. Let me repent of it and walk, move on with God. God does no whole hammer to say, because you missed me last week, I'm going to kill you. But it is for us to be on our toes every time to make sure we are ready to make it to heaven. That's all. That's all. Be on your toes. If you don't get prepared, let me tell you something, beloved. If you don't plan, you'll prepare to, you'll plan to fail. So you better plan now that you'll make it. Otherwise, you'll see yourself failing. Next. How to build up one another. We must confess our sins and trespasses to one another and pray for one another. James chapter 5 verse 16. Pray for one another. Confess your sins with one another. Go. It's, that's nothing wrong to go. Brother, I made a mistake here. This is what I did. To be frank with you, in my Christian life, all these years, and serving the Lord, there was a time one lady touched my heart in a great measure. Serious. It was really a real touch in my inner being. A lady wrote me an email and tell me, Pastor, forgive me, I speak something against you. The thing really, I'm telling you, it, it really put me where I'm supposed to be. Because we learn from one another. It takes humility to do that. You don't care what that person has said. You don't care what the person will do to you. You confess it out. Do you know when we confess things out, we're actually setting ourselves free. And what will happen, there will be new relationship. Closer and more closer relationship. But mankind, being what we, who we are, even though we say we are ministers, we, our pride does not allow us to be real or to speak out truth. You know why? If I say it, maybe it will come against me. Let me tell you, when you speak out the truth, somebody go against you, God will deal with that person. Because you are following the will of the Lord. Speak out the truth. Don't hide it. So encourage one another, comfort one another. Pray for one another. And confess your sins. Speak it out. Get it out. Get it out. I remember the brother came to me and said, Pastor, I used to be very angry with you. Because I see my shepherd doesn't act. So he was angry with me. One day God spoke to him. Listen, your shepherd is like Moses. So he cannot act the way you want him to act. He has to carry compassion. Then he came and said, Pastor, when I heard that word, I pulled back and said, Lord, forgive me. Now people wanted to act. Look, every act or every step I take can affect how many people? More than 600 people in this church. What about those outside? Therefore, I have to give thought, go to God for wisdom to handle issues. To handle issues. In my nature, I'm a person, 
If you say you don't want something, I say let it be. But you know, as I started pastoring, I learned a lot of things. I shared it with many people, close people. I thank God for pastoring because I learned a lot of things. Even somebody right in, perhaps I want to step down. Straight away, I tell you, no, you're not going. Then I'll go and hug them, I'll kiss them, they're not going. But if it's this, before when I was not pastoring, uh oh, you don't need to say it. I will encourage you even to step down. But you see, as you come closer to God to have a shepherd heart, you totally change. Ask God to give you a shepherd heart. You will learn a lot. You will begin to love even when, it, when you get hurt. You even do things which in your strength you will not do it. Normally on Saturdays, no matter what, I will never come out. But as a shepherd, I have to come out. If the sheep cry, bah, I have to go and look where they are. I cannot say, well, on Saturdays, I'm not supposed to go out. I have to go to hear what's going on. That is the job of a shepherd. That's the job. That is why it's important. As you and I begin to walk this path, let's know one thing. God is doing more things in us. Building up us up more and more in the image of his holy son. That wherever we are, people will say Christ. In you and they glorify the name of the Lord. I remember in 1996, in the U.S., people saw me in conferences. 1999, 2000, when they see me again, they said there's something different. Now, Brother Danny, you, you smile a lot. You laugh a lot. Before, you don't smile. 97, you didn't laugh. 8, you don't. But now, you smile a lot. I told him because God did a lot of work. Because now, I'm shepherding. So, with the grace upon the sheep, they transfer it to me. So I become nicer. I smile, laugh. But it wasn't so before. There must be a change in our lives, in our being. That's why you are here. God wants to do work inside of you. It's not easy. You get hurt. You, you feel frustrated. But that is when the work is getting inside to set you free. Not upon your body, but right inside the inner man. Next. For us to edify one another, we must be hospitable to one another without grumbling. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. I love this. I want us to read it. 1 Peter chapter 4. Verses 9 and 10, it says, Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. See what it says there. We need to be hospitable to one another. Don't grumble. Grumbling is not of God. God hates grumbling. The people of Israel murmured and grumbled in the wilderness and that is one of the sins they committed and God dealt with them. Don't grumble. Even when God gave the Levites the word in the book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18 it says, do not bear grudge against your brothers and sisters but love them as you love yourself for I am the Lord. Don't grumble. Grumbling is not of God. Murmuring is not of God. Come out from that. Come out. Live for God and for him alone. Whatever that makes you to grumble, go and play that air. Settle that issue. I rather go and, even if I hear that somebody is untouchable, I rather come to you and find out that you are untouchable, which, is, which means you are, touch, you are a very touchy person. Nobody can reach out to you. I like to find out. I don't need to hear what people say. But go and have your own first class experience with that person. Other than being far away and judging people. That will not do you any good. Next. We 
must be submissive to one another with humility. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 through 6. Submissive to one another. Being humble. Humility is what we need. We need humility. Put on humility. Put on Christ. Wherever you go, in your words, in your actions, not false humility. You know there are people who look very humble outwardly. But inside they are not. This false humility. I remember I was praying for one lady in my own calculation or my own valuation. She is the most humble person you can ever find. But when I lay hand upon her, I saw in a vision a peacock. So I opened my eye to make sure it is her head. It's not somebody else's head. Because I wasn't sure. I put my hand again. I want to pray for her. She was, she was on the line. I saw again a peacock. I opened my eyes. How can it be? Because I saw poor thing, the way she stands, very humble. So after two times, the third time, I pull her aside. And that's what I normally do. I pull her aside. I ask her sister, how come you are, how come you need humility? She said, ah, I said, how come you are proud? Then she told me the reason. Many people become proud because of some reasons. One, they want to be like others. They become imposters. Two, they want to show off what they have. Or thirdly, they want to tell you how much they know. But they may be carrying on themselves sheep clothing, but inside they are wild wolves. God's people, that is not good. Maintain humility. Humility is not wearing t-shirt to church or wearing slippers. You see, I'm very humble. I just wear t-shirt to church. You know, I'm, I'm so humble, I don't even brush my teeth before I come to church. Please, do brush. Please, do brush. That's not humility. Because in case you want to pray for me, I don't know if I'm falling under the power of God or falling under the power of something. So please, do brush. Do brush. That's not humility. Do brush. Because I had a brother who told me, a minister who told me, Pastor Danny, do you know, even before I brush my teeth, God must tell me to brush my teeth. And I told brother, thank God for you, but I don't need God to tell me to brush my teeth because nature tells me that I need to brush my teeth in the morning. Sometimes we try to spiritualize everything. Brushing teeth also, God must tell you, uh, God must even tell me which tie to put. Uh, please, thank God for you. I don't need all this revelation. If you come, praise the Lord, but I don't need to go to God. God, here is your servant. So what time am I going to wear? I need revelation, Lord. Go, pa, 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 ya, taraba. Please. I can use that time to pray for something else. To pray for people who are languishing in problem. Then going to God and telling him, Lord, your servant wants to go to church now. Which socks shall I wear? <laughs> and the devil tell you, the one you have not washed for the past three months. <laughs> and when you reach in the church, please take off your shoes and say, Hallelujah. God's people, please help us. May God help us. May God help us. So we must be submissive and humble with one another, love one another. In order to encourage one another, we must also be swift to hear. This is very important. Be swift to hear, but slow to speak. In the book of James chapter 1, a moment, look at what the Bible says. Very interesting. James chapter 1, verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Slow to speak, but swift to hear. Many of us don't hear, but we talk, 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 talk. Make time to hear. Make time to hear, beloved. Be slow to wrath, because the wrath of Man does not produce the righteousness of God. Your anger will never produce the righteousness of God. You are unnecessarily angry. Do you ask yourself, why am I angry? You don't even know why you're angry, but you're angry against the innocent, especially when you're angry against the innocent. You are committing awful sin. God's people, be swift to hear. Pay attention. Listen. Hear before you begin to talk. Don't talk what you don't know. Don't talk what you don't understand. Be swift to hear. Quick to hear, slow to speak. 
You know why we are quick to speak? Because we want to show people that we know. We want to, you know, it's beat our knowledge. Bible said knowledge puffs up. We try to show, look, I know what to do. Look, at my age, well, that's not the issue. The issue is, do you speak what edifies people? Or you try to throw mud to destroy people's life? Well, I always say it. If you come to this church and you are not dealt with and you leave to another church, the same thing is still in you. You create the same problem over there. Until those issues are settled within you. This is one thing you must understand. Wherever you go, you are carrying that disease. Because it's right inside. Even though you pretend to be good in the eyes of people, that is still there. Be sweet to hear, but slow to speak. Next. We must lay aside all filthiness. If you want to equip or edify other people, please lay aside all filthiness. James chapter 1 verse 21. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Very important. Lay aside all filthiness. Lay aside all arguments. The Bible declared. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 and 4. Pull down all arguments. Throw them away. It doesn't lead us anywhere. Argument doesn't lead us anywhere. Speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Keep your hands clean. Live pure. Let your heart be pure before God. Remember, reputation is what people think you are. But character is what God knows you to be. You must know this. People might see you, oh, he's a very cool guy. He doesn't talk much. But God knows that you are not cool. You are cruel. That is why it's important. Let us say all fit in it. It doesn't help. I need to be edified. When I read your testimony, when you write to me, when you send me email, pass, I love you, that edifies me. You now many people will be in touch when they're angry, they will never be in touch with you again. How many of you does that? When you want to know they're angry, you will never see their email anymore. But when they're happy, they can send. They can send you email. How are you, pastor? I love you. When they're not, hang- we're not happy, no, how are you? It's like, want to die, die, la. <laughs> exactly. I also need encouragement. Your testimony encourages me. It makes me happy that I know God is doing something. God is mighty. God is worthy to receive our praise. God's people, lay aside all filthiness. Those things that make you to go against God's word is not God. Those things that stirs you up with anger is not God. Those things that makes you not to listen to common counsel is not of God. Those things that make you not to listen to counsel of God from godly people is not of God. Those things that make you to think that, well, I know it all, it's not of God. It's not. It's our arrogance, our pride. Let's watch out and be careful. Next. For us to equip one another, we must be doers of the word. James chapter 1, verse 22 through 24. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Be doer of the word. God wants us to be doers. It does not matter how many years you've been a Christian, but can we find Christ in you because you are a doer of the word? That's all. Oh, I've been a Christian for 20 years. I've been a Christian for 10 years. Oh, I've been a Christian for 5 years. It does not matter. We don't talk about you hearing God yesterday. Do you hear God still today? Do you still obey him? Obedience is better than sacrifice. A minute step of obedience will open a gigantic door of blessing for your life. What is our pride? When you die, you leave everything behind. And go. Pastor Daniel, Pastor Daniel, the church is not 10,000. Wake up, wake up. He's, he's gone. What is our pride? Therefore, be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Now, you may ask me a question before we close. How can we stay true in life? 
How can we stay true in life? How can you maintain true, true, trueness in your life so that anyone who sees you will know that you are a man of truth? We can do that by avoid, avoiding emotional infidelity. Avoid emotional infidelity, you are able to stay true in life. Many of us are not emotionally fidel. We are always in, practicing infidelity in our lives, whereby we, we are not steady, we are not faithful. We are not consistent. There's no constancy in our lives. The life we live is anything goes. Now, we see this friend, oh, this is our best friend. Tomorrow, we, see, we, just, we cannot maintain relationship for a long time. This is something I ask, and I cannot ask it. Do you love relationship? What, in my own life, what comes first is not the, 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 the ministry, but relationship. Relationship. So for you to stay true in life, you must learn to avoid emotional infidelity. Secondly, we can stay true in life by keeping all our so-called business affairs or ministry affairs in the office. Come back home to meet your family, not to meet business partners in the house. Yes. You must learn how to keep all your business affairs and ministry affairs in the office. Come back home to meet family. The moment you begin to bring office to your home, you are going to create more havoc. And there's going to be a lot of problems. Because before you know it, you begin to treat your wife as your secretary or treat your wife as one of your staff. It's true. Thirdly, in order to maintain or stay true in life, we must have unflinching honesty with ourselves. By being unflinchingly honest, God's people will be able to become honest to people. You know our problem, we are not honest to ourselves. We have no honesty in ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. The worst deception is self-deception. You know what you're doing is wrong. You don't need a prophet to tell you that. But you still continue doing it. Unflinching honesty. Stay put where you are. Be honest to yourself. You cannot be honest to your wife unless you're honest to yourself. Be honest to your children, to your wife, to your husband. To your fellow colleagues, to fellow church members, to your pastor. Pastor also be honest to the church. Honesty is what we need in life. In the book of wisdom, integrity comes one followed by honesty. Maintain honesty. Don't say something else and say another thing here. This is what has ruined the body of Christ. When they see you, pastor, I'll be with you till Jesus come. The, as much as he's saying, actually telling you, Pastor, next moment you're not going to see me. I will never support you. This is exactly what you see today. No honesty. We are not honest to ourselves. We are like a roller coaster. Rolling stone that gathers no moss. No sincerity. Thirdly, we must be careful not to have regular discussion about ourselves with people. If you want to stay true, avoid regular discussion about yourself. Oh, poor me. I'm like this. You know, some people try to use poor image to attract, attract attention. Some also want to use their so-called good image to destroy. To destroy the weak. Don't put yourself one side. Stop talking about you, about yourself. Avoid that. Either it's at work or in office. That's why there are unfaithfulness. When you go to your secretary or go to a lady in office and begin to talk about your wife, what are you telling that woman? You're telling that woman that that woman is better than your wife. And when you go also and begin to tell another man about your husband, what are you saying? You are passing the message. Avoid talking about yourself. You might not talk about your spouse, but you talk about yourself. 
Only if I can be like that person. You don't need to be like that person. You need to be yourself. And thank God for being yourself. Thank God for whom he had made you to be. You are absolute child of God. You are not a human being in the making. You are absolute human being. Complete human being. That's how you can stay true. Otherwise, you begin to do things to impress people. In so doing, you lose your identity. Because you want to be like somebody else. Oh, how I wish I'm as tall as he is. How I wish I'm as short as he is. How I wish I'm as big as he is. Not fat, big. That's what we say. How I say I'm, so, I'm as thin as you are. Thank God for who you are. Then you will stay true. Next. You want to stay true in life? Do not sweep your personal problems under the carpet. But rather face it. Don't sweep your personal problem under the carpet. You know you have problem. You know there's problem in your life. Deal with the face reality of life. Stop sweeping them under the carpet. Pretending as if they never existed. They are right there. Deal with that problem. Face on it. Face it on. Deal with it. Then you will see a change. You will stay through. But when you continue to sweep it under the carpet, what happens? I tell you, people will misunderstand you. People will think that you are what you are presenting to them, but you are not. You are showing them something different. Brother, can you come for this uh, 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 meeting tonight? Always you've been coming for the meeting. Oh, no, I cannot make it. I'm a bit busy. You are lying. You see, you are sweeping your problem. You know you have a problem with somebody in that meeting. So you don't want to go. It's like want to shut everybody off. You are sweeping under the carpet. You don't want to face reality. Why can't you go, brother, can I talk to your mommy? I'm not happy about this. Also. You settle that problem. That's all. But stop sweeping it under the carpet. Will you, will you participate in uh, this... Uh, 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 uh. healing meeting um, I, I'm busy I can't make it because you're not happy did God tell you that? no you are using your human ideas but you forget that God sees all those things next to stay true we must avoid finger pointing on others for our irresponsible act. Many times we point finger. It's because of you. It's because of you. That's why this happened. That's why that happened. Stop pointing fingers. For every one finger you point, three will be facing you. You must know it. Point your finger and see. You point one, three. You cannot say I'm pointing. No, you only do like that. Three will be facing you. For every one finger, three will face you. Therefore, don't point fingers for all your irresponsible act. Go and make yourself to become responsible, not irresponsible. Next. To stay true, avoid meeting members of opposite sex outside the workplace. Avoid it. If you want to stay true to your life, please avoid unnecessary meeting of opposite sex members of your work or, or whoever they are outside. Keep yourself away. Especially we have the phones today, SMS, you send, 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 send. Well, one day you'll be caught. Yes, no, yes, no. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, mm. Oh, okay. Who? Okay, you don't know. People around you don't know who. All you do, one day your sin will find you out. Quit from it. Don't think nothing is hidden. Nothing is hidden. It will be seen if you know. If you have to meet those people outside, please meet in a group to save yourself. Meet in a group. Keep your distance as far as you can. Keep your distance. As much as you can. Even, even you say, oh, I can. please keep your distance as much as you can. Next, to stay true to life. Avoid sharing your personal feelings unnecessarily. There are many people that always share their personal feelings. Your feelings might not represent what God is doing in your life. When you drink a bitter medicine, the taste in the mouth is not the same as what it does when it gets into your stomach. Therefore, avoid sharing your unnecessary personal feelings. Oh, I feel like this. I, I feel this. When you look at me, I don't feel good. I don't have, 
Look, throw away those things. Maybe you have a stronghold that needs to be dealt with. And stop throwing on people and thinking that because of this person, that's why you are like that. Sharing unnecessary personal feelings. I feel so sad. I feel very hurt. I'm so hurt. I feel so hurt. Why are you hurt? Oh, because I was not allowed to do this. This is your personal feelings. You are destroying the body of Christ. If you feel hurt, tell the Lord to heal you. That's why Jesus came. Broken heart and contrite spirit. God do not forsake. Can I hear amen? So if you are hurt, that's it. Simplest way to, to heal your hurt is to go to the person who hurt you and say, Brother, sister, the way you spoke to me or what you did, I'm not, I get hurt. Then you say, oh, please, I'm sorry. I did not mean it to be that way. You get healed. But when you go and stop it inside and go around and tell people, I feel hurt, I feel hurt, because I, I feel hurt. It doesn't solve your problem. You are actually behaving like a child that needs to be corrected. Next. Avoid unnecessary kisses and hug, hugs at all times. Unnecessarily. Avoid it in order to stay true. Avoid it. Unnecessary hugging and kissing. Avoid it. In order for you to stay true. Be a man or woman that God will always be proud of. That you are far away from anything called lust. Lusting is not of God. Throw it away. Always find a polite way to end a personal conversation. When somebody talks to you and you feel that this conversation has entered into personal, find a very polite way to end it. So that you don't get involved. You don't get entangled with illegal relationship. I just want somebody to talk to. I just want somebody to talk to. Okay, talk. Talk to, I feel this way. When I sleep, I feel this way. Oh, oh. Then, oh, shall we pray? Find a very polite way to end the conversation. I think the best way to end it is what? Let us pray. Let us pray. Otherwise, before you begin to hear certain things you don't want to hear, which you are not prepared to hear also, let us pray. Because prayer will solve the problem. Listening will not solve the problem, but prayer will do it. Last but not the least, show your ultimate, ultimum commitment to your spouse on a daily basis. Make sure that you show your commitment to your spouse, to your friend, on a daily basis. If God has put in a relationship, relationship does not mean relationship of husband and wife, or husband and wife-to-be. You could have a person who hears you out, who supports you in prayer, always show your ultimate commitment to that person. God sends someone to hear you out, to pray for you, to support you. Sometimes God can send somebody, even what your father or your mother cannot do for you, or your brother, or your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law, can, they cannot do for you. But God puts somebody who begins to support him. You will know it because that person will be really a truthful, honest person who will support you all the way. Pray with you. Rain fall sunshine. Night or day, they'll be there for you. you and show your ultimate, ultimate commitment. Don't try to be fair with a friend. As and when you like, you throw your tantrum and walk off. Next time you come back, you don't build relationship that way. Learn to build, don't destroy. So when we live like this, what will happen? We can stay true in life. Two, we can edify one another. Remember, when you are talking to people, you are not a problem solver. But you are just hearing them out. When you see yourself that you are the problem solver, you'll be in trouble. Therefore, learn not to make yourself as one mini-God who solves our problem. No one can solve our problem except Jesus. When you hear the voice of God, you know how to do it.